Join us today for the soldier who could not die. Welcome to One Nation Under God here today at Stone of Help. And uh, give me just a couple minutes before we get started because this is a new segment. So let me just say say a couple things. First of all, we're the same channel. Nothing has changed. Uh, you know, we're about one thing and one thing only. That's all we'll ever be about. And that's lifting the name of Jesus up because that's the only way anything gets fixed. And now we attempt to do that through the preaching slash teaching of the word. Uh, uh, we do have a segment we just call On the Road, and uh, we'll just kind of do exactly what that says. We'll just kind of tape on location, try to lift the name of Jesus up that way. And and this will be a, a, a another segment similar to On the Road that uh, we just call One Nation Under God. Now, when we post using this, what we'll do is we'll just share like a nugget of history, and uh, we'll look at it from a Christian perspective, not necessarily what you're going to read in your textbook at school, right? Uh, but we'll want to look at it from a Christian perspective, and um, then we're going to see what kind of biblical truths that we can pull out of it, some practical, some spiritual, sometimes both, that we can apply to our lives. So we just thought it would be kind of interesting to use um, history as a method to share the Word, and that's what One Nation Under God, that's what this this will be about, One this segment will be about. And so if you're watching this from whatever state you may be viewing from, why don't you drop that down in the comment section and, and uh, let me know what, what state you're viewing from. And if you happen to be watching from another country, drop that down in the comments and, and uh, let me know where you're watching from, what country you're seeing this from. Uh, and always remember this, even if you're watching from another country, uh, never think that one nation under God is not for you because I promise you it is because there's biblical truths for everybody that we'll be pulling out of this. Maybe using a little bit of American history, but there's biblical truths that will apply to everybody. So, having said that, let's just start with our, this will be our very first installment, February the 22nd, 2023. This will be the first installment of One Nation Under God. Now, today is uh, uh, George Washington's, if I did my math correct, it's his 231st birthday. And so today we're just going to take, I'm going to take just a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about the soldier who could not die. I'm going to talk a little bit about Washington and, and like one aspect. And so I'm going to start in Psalm chapter 91. Now Psalm, Psalm chapter 91 is known as the protective Psalm a lot of times. I think there may be about 16 verses, uh, but I'm just going to use one verse. We'll use verse 7 as a springboard. And here's what your Bible declares. It says, A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I'm going to tell you something. Washington lived that verse. So much so that he became known as the soldier who could not die. In 1755, he joined forces with General Edward Braddock to drive out the French from western Pennsylvania. Now, this would have been the French and Indian War, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they ended up, uh, during this time, marching directly into an ambush. And obviously, the enemy opened fire. During this skirmish, George Washington was the only mounted officer not shot off his horse. And so when Washington and his men finally reached Fort Cumberland in western Maryland, by this time word had spread that all the troops had been killed. So Washington wrote his family, letting them know that he was still alive, but only as a result of, quote, the miraculous care of providence. Here's what he told his brother. This is part of the letter that he that was that he had written to his brother. He said, As I have heard since my arrival at Fort Cumberland, a circumstantial account of my death and dying speech, I take this early opportunity of contradicting the first and assuring you that I have not yet composed the latter. In other words, he told his brother, I am still alive and I have not even written my will. That's really what he told his brother. He goes on to say, But by the all-powerful dispensations of providence, I have been protected beyond all human probability and expectation. Listen to what he said. He said, for this is coming from Washington himself. He said, I had four bullets through my coat. I had two horses shot out from under me, yet I escaped unhurt, although death was all around me, leveling all my companions all around me. As word of God's supernatural protection spread, the Reverend Samuel Davies said this. He said, Providence has hitherto preserved him, talking about Washington, 
uh, for some important service to his country. Now, how many knows that was prophetic because uh, this was a long time before he ever became president, right? Then we get to 1770, Washington returned back to those same woods, and this time he was just, he was on a simple surveying mission, and an Indian chief heard that Washington was back in the area, and he traveled to meet him. He'd been a leader with the French 15 years earlier, and uh, he had, with his gun, with his rifle, he had never been known to miss. But after, listen to this, after firing at George Washington during 15 years earlier, 17 times he shot at him and he, with no effect. He, he couldn't hit him. And he finally told his brave, he said, stop, just stop shooting at him. And he, he referred to Washington as the man who is the favorite of heaven and who can never die in battle. That's coming from a former enemy. Red Hawk, another Indian chief uh, in that same battle, had a similar testimony where he, he shot at George Washington 11 times and couldn't hit him. 24 years later, in 1779, Battle of Brandywine, he was still being protected because here, British Major Patrick Ferguson, who was the head of the British sharpshooters, singled out one American after another, and he was popping them off one after another. But just before he ordered his men to fire at their next target, he had a terrible feeling. And later he described the thought of shooting that particular soldier was disgusting. It, it just, now they, he didn't have that disgust about shooting any other soldiers because he'd been shooting them all day long. But when he had that one in his sights, that disgusted him. So the, Americ the, the guy that he was getting ready to shoot at was on a horse and the American slowly turned his horse and just walked away and, and Ferguson said he said look he said I could have killed him but I let him live and he later learned that you got it right it was General George Washington that he allowed to live on numerous occasions Washington testified of God's uh, supernatural protection he recognized that his life existed only as a result of the miraculous care of Providence now this is this is a little bit of a story that we, I just like to call the, the soldier who could not die. He had such supernatural protection. So what is it that you and I in 2023 can learn from this? Well, the first thing is this. Washington had a call on his life, right? He was called, listen, when all this was going on, uh, we, obviously we know now he was the first president, but he had no clue. He was first president. He didn't, he didn't, but he had a call. God knew. And uh, I'm going to tell you the same way that Washington had a call on his life. Let me, how many knows the Bible says this? When you get saved, you're called with the holy calling. Come on. You may not be called to be president. I'm not going to be called to be president, but I promise you we have a call in life. What's Jesus, Jesus said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. We all have a call on our life. And uh, then we, we uh, the second thing that we learn is this, is Washington was protected. He had supernatural protection. I mean, you go back to the letter that he wrote his brother, four holes in his coat that he was wearing, okay? Two horses shot out from under. All of his people around him, all of his friends around him being shot down died. He was the only guy that did not get shot off his horse. And this was not, and, and this was just in, in one little battle. It wasn't even the whole war. This took place all over, but just one battle. He had supernatural protection. You know, we started at, at Psalm 91, verse 7, you know, to start out with. And so I just want to kind of use this right here as we begin to, to close. And that's Psalm 91, verse 1. And that's, that's Psalm 91 starts out this way. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. And I'm going to tell you, so this picture behind me is, it's like one of my favorite pictures that's out there. And uh, I don't think that somebody just decided to paint it. I think this is the way that George Washington lived, and he knew how to dwell in a secret place. I believe that Washington was a man of prayer. I believe he was a man of the Word, and, and he knew we need that same secret place. That's what we need to learn from this, this story, friend. And, and we need to have a prayer life to dwell in that secret place. We need to be in the Word. To dwell in that secret place and I'm gonna tell you something you know we we share this uh, you know through, through uh, YouTube and people are watching it that way and uh, you know that's good I, I thank God that we have technology and able to do that but this does not take place of church never allow it to take place of church 
because we need to be in the house of God because we need other believers. We need that fellowship. These all help us to, to abide in that secret place. And when we abide in that secret place, that's when we, we have that supernatural protection. What did The Bible says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Amen. So thank you guys for hanging out with us today as we talked a little bit about the soldier who could not die. And always remember that you have a call on your life the same way Washington did. And you, my friend, can walk in that supernatural protection the same way he did if we learn to abide in that secret place. Thanks for joining us. May God bless you and may God bless America.